Hello and welcome to IPO Adda. The company in focus today is AU Small Finance Bank and the person in, uh, in, on, the, on the hot seat is Sanjay Agarwal, MD and CEO of AU Finance Bank, yes. Small Finance Bank. Uh, thank you. Sanjay, thank you for joining us in Bloomberg Queen. To start with, uh, you know, I want you to clarify this 12% F FI limit. Uh, you know, you had two RBI circulars coming in and that's creating some confusion in the minds of investors. So can you clarify what is the kind of headroom available for FIs? No, so I think there is no confusion. You know, it uh, it just uh, came out as a surprise for <laughs> us. And uh, as a, as a, as a SFB, you know, we can have up to 49% automatic route as an FI participation. And we were around 47.11 uh, at the time we went for the IPO. But suddenly we got a message from RBI that you know because at 47.11 it's trigger which happens. So you can't ex uh, you can't expect the people to participate. So we again gone back to RBI to the clarification and now our holding is below 47.11 so now the whole uh, <coughs> foreign participant can happen and all are coming uh, in a big way today you know and but uh, the most important thing the headroom post IPO will be quite significant because post IPO I think our foreign holding could be around 38 to 40 percent and in the, you know in the SFB space AU bank is getting list you know it's not an uh, holding structure so I hope that you know there will be good headroom available for many people to participate even post IPO. When you say 10 to 12 percent of headroom post listing, it basically means that uh, on the listing day you're going to see a lot of FIA uh, activity coming in because only six percent of that would be <coughs> uh, given to FIA in the in the entire IPO, right? Yeah, yeah. So no, so for me it's so difficult to comment because on a on a listing day what happens I'm. This is our first IPO, right? Yeah. So, but I hope that because a uh, lot of interest is around India, a lot of interest is around this sector, and we being a bank, you know, and at 38, 39% post IPO, I hope that, you know, people might be interested, you know, in getting into an IPO AU story. And, 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 and the way we have seen the overwhelming response, you know, I hope so. So uh, my first question is about the rich valuation which everyone is talking about. You've been growing at, at uh, over 30% every year and so your uh, your adjusted price to book value is coming to 5.3 on a trailing 12 month basis. Uh, that's <coughs> equivalent to uh, HDFC bank which has been growing 30% every year. How do you, s uh, uh, what do you have to say about that, the rich valuation? Because p on a valuation front, when, when you convert into a bank, you would be valued at as good as HDFC. So I think I think you have to give us some leeway there because the size matters, right? HDFC Bank has a too high bar, so we should not be compared with a bank like HDFC. You know, they had a track record of 20, 22 years as a banking, right? But we also have a track record of 20 years as a NBFC till March 17. And if you really see in our last say, eight, nine years of journey and the growth, you know, we actually has performed more than 30% in terms of asset, in terms of ROE of 3% now north of 3% ROE, you know, and uh, sorry ROE and the ROE of north of 20%, you know, we have really managed this platform, which is not that too good in terms of, uh, you know, disbursement, in terms of, in terms of how you can manage this, uh, this as a company, right? But now we has become bank, you know, a small finance bank, which allows us more uh, freedom, which allows us more power, which allows us more visibility. So we hope that, you know, uh, the way we have performed on SA, uh, on NBFC, the same can be performed on SFB and a lot of people are actually backing us uh, on the back of our performance and we have travelled across globe and as I told you about, uh, everybody is excited about AU's, uh, India story, then the sector story and then to the SFB story and they want to back us and I think valuation is not which we decide, you know, valuation which has been the feedback of markets our lead managers and you know whole of the environment around us so i hope that you know we can still perform on these levels and take this story to forward yeah. uh, sanjay i just wanted to address one more um, uh, you know factor which has been uh, high as far as concern, analyst concerns uh, are uh, there uh, more than 50 percent of the overall uh, aum actually comes from just one state of rajasthan and even if you put uh, the top four states together it works out to 90 percent of the aum which makes the company vulnerable to state specific risk uh, we've also seen the effect of such events in the past uh, on companies like Bharat uh, Financial Inclusion in the case of um, Andhra Pradesh. So what is the strategy to hedge against? 
So again, you know, you to help me out to you know get myself expressed here. So the other companies you're talking about is more microfinance, which is unsecured, right? Sure. We are doing a positive assets. And Rajasthan is our home state, you know, we have born out of that state. Our whole comfort is around that area. So whatever we start new as a product line or as a business line or as a sector, you know, we want to start from Rajasthan. Okay. And you know, AU has also gone with a contiguous expansion approach mm -hmm. because you are dealing with those customers who are on the on the base of the pyramid or maybe a, a, a level above. So we need to get along with them, right? So we need more deeper penetration than a wider penetration. So I think this was a strategy and that is where asset quality is good enough in last 20 years, right? So I think the perception about the concentration race, the perception around that we are only a Rajasthan-based organization is, is, in my opinion, is, is not too, too good. But I think as we are growing in you know, the last eight, nine years, you know, we have actually gone above, uh, you know, uh, away from Rajasthan. We were 100% in 2008. Mm -hmm. Now we are around 50%, you know. Mm -hmm. So now this SAB platform will allow us to express maybe uh, across country. But I think the approach would be same. You know, we have to want to go contiguous. We want to go more deeper. And, and that's the way I hope that, you know, we can actually look for the financial inclusion also. So, right? so yeah. I, I just yeah. want to bring up yeah. that. So what what, ki, what what are you targeting? See, you you may say, and I'm not very convinced when you say that it's your home state and, and you know, everything's fine. Because political risk you can't control. Because, because uh, and I'm not talking out of the air as we've seen that happen with SKS, that what happened in Andhra Pradesh. Uh, there was a big issue because of political issues. So that can happen. So if you are at, you got it from 100 to 50 percent, what are you looking at a level that Rajasthan will come down so that you know you are politically hedged also. Yeah. So, so again I say that you know we have a vintage of 20 years. So political risk is not new mm. to, the, to this world right. And again I want to reinforce that we are into secured asset. Okay. So where we when we land either there is a security of vehicle, there is a security of properties, there is a security of maybe maybe anything uh, around the customer right and that's really helps us to manage this kind of uh, the markets and this kind of asset right and again you know we are the cognizant of this fact that we are into one state but that we took decision eight years back and the already we have shown to the world that we can manage Maharashtra, we can manage Gujarat, uh, you know MP, the NCR, the HP, the Punjab and you know the whole canvas of India is open now so you know you have to give us some time maybe okay. another three to five years and then we can talk on the subject that you know how Rajasthan dominates us. You know, yes, Rajasthan will have a lion's share in our uh, you know in our asset class, but you know it won't be like on these numbers. But I think maybe around 30, 35 percent in the next three to five years. <coughs> on the base front, you sp spoke about the fact that you cater to the base and little about that MSMEs and other uh, sec segments. Uh, look, I'm go I was going through your gross NTS. It went up uh, from 0.6 to 1.6 because you moved from 150 to 120 days. Uh, and, uh, and then uh, NPS from 0.4 to 1.1. Uh, now that you're going to become a small finance bank, you will have to move from 120 to 90 days. What is the kind of effect that will happen on your NPA? Because and when will you start showing that? Yeah. Because the transformation into small small finance bank hasn't happened yet. It will be subject to uh, uh, you know RBI approval after the IPO. So when is that going to happen? So no no. So so I think uh, first let's let's talk about our NPA as of now. You know, we are 11,000 crore of asset on March 17, with an IRR of around 16.5. So any day, 120 days is around, gross is 1.6, net is 1.05. You know, any day, any guy in this world will take this number, right? We expect, we, we know that it has come from 0.9 to 1.6, has a two prime reasons. One, last year we had a demotization. Second, because the, the classification was from 150, come, came down to 120. So this spike is because of that, but as we move forward, you know, SAB we already become SAB. This year it will be 90 days as a on a EU bank platform. We hope that we expect actually that you know it, it might increase by 20 basis point or 30 basis point. But I think our execution capability to recover money is is going up because you get surfacey, you have a visibility, and how the whole world is moving to crack NPAs, you know, the whole environment of the country is not to lose money. Mm. So I think this all environment will help us to maybe reduce our NPA in, in, in going forward, right? Sanjay, coming back to the AUM mix, uh, vehicle finance is important for your company given its uh, share stands at 50%. 
Uh, my question is why uh, would a customer come to a uh, small finance bank rather than um, uh, you know go to a Mahindra and Mahindra Financial Services or a Sri Ram Transport? Basically, what I'm trying to understand is what is your company's USP and how do the uh, uh, dyna competition dynamics in this segment work? I think this is a very good question, you know, because that's not why we become bank. Actually, you know, people really was asking me why you want to go from MBFC to bank when you're running such a good company. But you know, as a human, as a customer, you always want to bank. I want to go to the bank actually for any kind of services. Mm -hmm. When bank don't deliver, you go to the NBFCs. You know that's the way we have perceived or we have felt over the years. So now, when once we become a bank, we have product, we have reach, we know how to lend, how to collect. We know we have built a brand. You know now building a brand on bank is easy. So customer want to walk to us, and if we say no, then they will go to the NBFC. So that strategy is very simple, you know, let's target more to the NBFC customer than a bank customer for asset, okay. you know, because we, there we belong ourselves, you know, we know how to, how to handle those customers, right? And also allow our liability team, which is uh, new to us, you know, to build a decent retail franchise in years to come. And meanwhile, if you need a fund, you know that AU is a 20 year old industry. We have around 60, 70 relationship with every bank, mutual fund, life insurance company in this country. So we can bank on them to raise wholesale deposit also. So I think this combination of these three things makes our life easy, you know, and we really want to focus on asset built up. Okay, so if I just talk about um, uh, the AUM mix, especially for vehicle financing, uh, it has already come down from about 80% to 50 odd now in the next three to five years, how will that? Yeah, so, you know, Again, I think we are dealing into a self-employed space. For us, vehicle is one of the sectors where self-employed people go and take the vehicle and earn money, right? And that's very easy to do. So, and it's directly linked to your economy GDP numbers, the sector. So, I believe that AU will have a significant presence in vehicle finance. But as we move forward in three to five years, this will come down to around 25-30 percent. But the other book like MSME, SME, the home loan will take over because of the no base there. But uh, if we can, these are bread and butter. We have built ourselves around those assets. So it will continue that. But I just wanted to point yeah. out yeah. On, on the, uh, so vehicle, I think when Shraddha was uh, uh, getting at and when she named Sri Ram Transport and Mahindra Mahindra Finance, they, they are specializing in vehicle, vehicle finance. Okay. So that is, I think, where she was coming at. So why would a person come to you rather than go to a company which is specializing there? And on your other businesses also, well, the street concern is that, you know, the growth obviously no doubt is impressive in the SME segment, in the MSME segment, but it's pretty much in the last four years it's originated. So do you think that this run rate will continue because the base is low? Now, if the base is high, uh, can this run rate continue? Where is there is competition in the transport segment? So I'll come with on, on the original uh, you know, observation that SDC Bank, when they can grow at 25% at this level, we are just saying our pass is 30 percent, you know, difficult for me to comment as of now because I am in IPO stage, but why won't we, would be, you know, why won't it be, because the, the base is only, only 11,000 crores and that to be the four, three, four assets, you know, now we become a bank, you know, we, got, we can give them uh, OD limits, the CC limits, the trade finance, you know, we can, uh, the lot many people will walk to the branch, you know, and the bank has, has number one priority to take the loans. And you know, uh, in terms of the companies we are talking about, we are dealing with them for the last 10 years, right? Okay. And we already shared our, you know, kind of growth in those markets, right? So they, these are not new to us, you know. So I don't believe that, you know, ki we won't be going the same uh, pace in, in years to come. So know? if that is the case, uh, you in uh, two to three years, you will double your asset side, AUM, and that would mean that you would need a capital requirement as well. Uh, so, again, how much of yeah. capital requirement or the current capital base is able to sustain that this kind of growth for the next how many years? So, you know, regulatory requirement is only 15%, uh, break up in two parts, 7.5 tier 1, 7.5 yeah. tier 2. Yeah. We are at around 21%, 20% is tier 1. You know, even we grow with the same pace of what we have done in the last 7, 8 years, I don't think we will require a regulatory capital for next 3 to 5 years. Okay. You know, but I think beyond the regulatory capital is always a comfort capital. What a platform requires, you know, in terms of stability, in terms of, you know, how you feel comfortable about an organization. So that we want to take our own time, maybe next 2 to 3 years and figure out that what is our comfort capital for this platform. So you're saying for, for next 5 to 7 years you won't be requiring any growth capital, that's what you're I'll saying? I'll say 3 to 5 years. 3 to 5 years. 
and for three to five years it's going but there is always a comfort capital you know which is beyond a regulatory capital and what about the new uh, changes which are happening in the banking sector from the provisioning point of view your ba basel 3 is also coming in uh, Will that require additional capital from your end? Uh, so we have to go back and see all this effect once it's get implemented. In a very early days for us to comment, but uh -huh. you know we have adequate capital around 20 percent. Our NPA is around 1.6, 1.7. So we we should not be in that uh, in a hurry kind of mode that you know we, we get disturbed or we need more capital <coughs> sooner and over than what what we are saying about in in terms of three to five years. Sanjay, uh, yeah. One yeah. last yeah. question. Uh, of course, uh, actually a break up into two uh, questions on the back of transformation into a small finance bank. One, uh, of course, to garner casa. Um, uh, deposits and build up your liability franchise you need to invest in branch expansion so just wanted to understand what that would uh, mean in terms of your cost structure uh, you know the kind of impact it could have on return ratios and secondly uh, of course you will also have to comply with CLR, uh, SLR CRR requirements now so uh, how will that impact your operating performance in the next two so years? I think I'll be able to answer this post 10th which is our okay. listing day okay. but uh, want to give you some color on it so we have uh, a Appointed Accenture and Oracles of the world to help us to build a right uh, IT architecture and the capex around for five years around 250 crores you know and I was reading somewhere that you know the branch is still still have some meaning in India so and that's the way we also think of so we also built around 300 branches with state of art you know and we have done around 120 crore of expenses there so I think putting this uh, for next uh, seven to eight years we might have a depreciation of around 40-50 crores in terms of uh, per, year. per year, but you know there is also is some kind of income level which comes only on a bank like you know cross selling to insurance, the cross selling to the mutual funds, all those stuff. So, so there is some figure out of it, but you know because of this uh, IPO stage, can't comment. But I think uh, I what I can assure that you know AU has an asset, you know, and that will a very good yield. You know, 16.5. We are cost of one is nine. And you know uh, how the post demortization, how much liquidity is available in terms of funds as a CASA. So, so uh, I think the cost of fund is going down. But uh, in terms of real picture, I think it's still early to comment. Uh, we will able to comment post this June uh, numbers, which will be out by maybe 20th of July, and then we can talk about more. Uh, how much of cost of fund can come down by since you start, uh, you know, generating CASA? So difficult to answer because I don't want to give any guidance number, but it's coming down. Coming Sanjay, down. today is the last day of the IPO. Wishing you all the best. Thank right. you for joining us. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.